Nicole the Math Lady. Today's lesson is all about estimating square roots. We might ask, why do we need to estimate square roots? They're pretty simple, right? I mean, for example, square root of 9, we know 3 times 3 is 9. Square root of 16, 4 times 4 is 16. Square root of 25, 5 times 5 is 25, right? So this would be pretty simple, unless you start getting into bigger numbers. So what if I gave you a number like this? Would you know the square root of 225? Hmm. Well, this is why we need to estimate. Sometimes we need to like get close to the number to be able to figure out, oh, what that actual square root might be. So we definitely know it's going to be more than 5, right? The answer is going to be more than 5 because that's 25. So what if we did 10 times 10? What's 10 times 10? Well, 10 times 10 we know is 100. What if we did 20 times 20? Well, 20 squared, same thing, is 400. So if you look, we know our answer is going to be between 10 and 20. So why don't we try shooting it in the middle, 15 times 15. So 15 squared, let's do our math over to the side. Well, and here's the other thing. We know our answer is going to end in a 5. So as we're multiplying, we have to think, what's going to give us an answer that ends in the 5? So it's the, first, the first thing is you look to see what two numbers it's between. Second thing, what's going to give me the number I want to end in? And 15 might do it. 5 times 5 is 25. See, there's the 5 that I need. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7. And then I'm going to bring down the 15. And if I add, yes, we will see I got to 225. So the square root of 225 is 15. So estimating helps you figure out like what number to shoot for and to give it a try. What about the square root of 900? How would we estimate that? Well, we already know that the, the 20, 20 squared, 20 times 20 is 400. So we're not quite there yet. What if we did 30? Let's go up to 30. Well, the 3 times 3 we know will give us the 9 that we're looking for. So let's look at 30 times 30. There's our 9, and then there's the two zeros that we need. Okay, so again, estimating is sometimes thinking about what's going to give you the number combination that you're looking for, maybe to the front of the number. So this would be 30. Another way to try to estimate it. Let's try a harder number. So here we have the square root of 1,024. Okay, let's look about some numbers. Well, we already know. We just did 30 times 30, right? 30 times 30 was 900, so it's not too far from there. What if we did 40? 40 times 40, we know that 4 times 4 is 16, so it's got to be between 30 and 40, but it's closer to the 30. And it ends in a what? It ends in a 4, which means the two numbers that I multiply have to end in a 4. So it's, it could be 2 times 2. So why don't we try 32 times 32? 32 times 32. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. Boom, there you go, 1,024. Again, estimating, trying to get close to the number seemed to help us here. Sometimes we're looking for a square root. We're not going to get a whole number answer. The answer might be a decimal, or it might be between two numbers. And our job is just to figure out where it might lie, what two numbers it might lie between. So let's see if we can figure out or get close to the two numbers that uh, the square root of 54 lies between. Well, we know what? We know 5 times 5 is 25, so that's not it. Uh, 6 times 6 is 36. I think we can get closer. 7 times 7 is 49. Ah, that's not too bad. It's pretty close to 54, so let's write down 7, right? Square root of 49, 7. And I'm going to write it like this, actually. I'm going to write it exactly how I just said. So the square root of 49 equals 7. And how about the square root, what's, what's 8 times 8? Well, 8 squared is 64, so the square root of 64 is 8. So we can see that 54 lies somewhere in here, so our answer is between 7 and 8. Let's try it again. So let's try it with this number, the square root of 94. Well, we got to get close. Well, we do know an easy one is 10 times 10 is 100, right? So the square root of 100 is 10. So we have to go lower. What's the square? What's a nine squared? 
Well, 9 times 9 is 81, so the square root of 81. So it looks like 94 is going to fall right in the middle between 9 and 10, somewhere in here. The last thing I want to show you is that sometimes we actually do need to use a calculator. Hey! <laughs> I know I always talk about not using calculators, but finding the square roots of, some, of something, you really do need a calculator if it's not a whole number. So I want to show you how to use it. So if you find your calculator, I know many of you use your phones. There's a calculator on your phones. I have an iPhone, so there's my calculator app. And you know, on the normal page of the calculator, you do not find the square root symbol. I have to actually turn my phone sideways or horizontal where I get all those other things, right? The more scientific calculator. And if you find the one that looks like this, has the square root, mine actually has the square root, it has a little x, and it has a 2. Yours might look like that. And how it works is when you have a number, Let's say my number is 64. I'm going to type in 64, and you hit your little sign. That's the square root sign. Mine automatically gives me the number 8. Some of you might have to actually hit an, an equal sign to get the 8. But either way, so for your some of your problems in your practice set today, you're going to need to use your calculator. So get them out. I know, super excited to use a calculator. <laughs> OK, but as long as you can recognize that symbol, you're ready to go. So that's it. That's it for me regarding estimating square roots. It's not too bad, but as numbers get bigger and bigger, it's going to be helpful to estimate. And also, we've got our handy calculator to help us out. Okay, it's Nicole the Math Lady. I will see you next time. Ah, I'll see you in the practice set, right? Okay, have a good one. Bye-bye.